Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm cooking with Ashley. I'm gonna show you how to make birria tacos. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my kitchen or welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm gonna show you, like I said, but this time less obnoxious, how to make birria tacos. So I've made these before and today I was gonna buy them, even though I know how to make them. And I realized that if I buy them, it's gonna cost me $26, plus I have to go drive down there to go get them. And if I make them, I can just order $16 worth of groceries and just put in a little bit of work and get some content. Oh, the kettle's ready. So we're gonna start with the peppers and I guess I'll just talk you through everything and we'll just have a little chat while we make these tacos. It's gonna take a long time, just a heads up. I use a slow cooker. You can do everything that I'm doing on the stove. Just put the heat to like probably 3.5 if you can and let it cook for like two to three hours. I set mine for four to six hours on my crock pot, but we'll get there. I'm getting ahead of myself. If you like my cooking videos, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Let's start cooking. So there's a lot of dry peppers you're gonna need if you want to taste delicious. Um, you don't need all of these, but honestly, every recipe is different, so it gets a little confusing. But dried pasilla pepper, mularo, guajillo, and I think puya, puya or yeah, puya. And these are all dried. You can get these if you're in Toronto. You can get these at Mercado, or you can get them at like any Latin American store anywhere you are. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut them here, and then I like do a little slit there, and I take all the seeds out. And you're gonna do that for all of them, two of each pepper. Okay, don't judge my cutting board, it's from the dollar store, okay? Okay. Have a pot ready and just put everything in here. See how easy that shit is? If there's a few little seeds, that's okay, don't worry. Toss it in. I have a half here, so I'm just gonna use it. These are not spicy. Last time, I tried to make a hot sauce out of these peppers and there was zero spice, zero. Now you're gonna pour water all over this, low heat and cover for like, <laughs> I just splashed it on myself. Low heat and cover for like 15 minutes or so. So I'm putting on a heat of three and I cover it. So you're gonna boil this for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, take it off the heat and let it sit and cool down for like 10 minutes. So in the meantime, I cut up some onion and some garlic and then I get all my spices together. So I guess I'll show you in a second. Like I said, it's not spicy. Those peppers are not spicy. At least the ones I buy are not spicy. So if you want spice, add some crushed red chili pepper. This is my shit. You need fresh thyme. You need it, you need fresh time. And you know what else you need? Well, you're gonna need everything, but like, these are things that you can't, you can't stop. You need fresh time and you need cinnamon sticks. Trust me, you need this shit. You need it. A lot of recipes call for Mexican oregano, but I just use regular oregano and it tasted bomb as fuck, so I don't know. You could use Mexican, but I just use no name oregano. Oh, this is time. I use, yeah, great value oregano. <laughs> I want no Ashley cutting board slander in the comments, okay? Because I know this thing is ratchet. I know it looks gross, it stains from all the freaking <laughs> things I cook. I'm gonna get a proper one, I promise you guys. So you don't have to finally cut it. You don't have to like finally chop it. You can literally just, I use about like a full onion, half an onion. I'm doing half today because it's like a smaller recipe than last time. But I'm just gonna probably cut it roughly like that. Beautiful, okay, amazing. Then I'm gonna take four cloves of garlic and crush those up. I took four big ones. Ooh, this one's big. I hate cutting garlic because it makes my hands smell, so. I use this thing. If you don't have one of these, you need one ASAP because they save me so much time.
Now I just prep my spices. I don't really measure. I just kind of toss this shit in. Um, I did like maybe two teaspoons, maybe like two spoonfuls. Like, I don't know if it's tablespoons or, I don't know, man. Just season it how you would season your own food. Don't overthink it. Like, just season it. So I put a bunch of salt. I add more later because after it cooks, it kind of like takes away the flavor. Does paprika do anything? I don't know but I add it to stuff anyways. <laughs> I have this Mexican spice mix or Salvadorian or something, I don't know, some type of Hispanic. And there's a bunch of cloves in here, so I have to dig out the cloves. Use like six cloves and crush them up. And I use four bay leaves. Don't forget to take these out, because last time I didn't, <laughs> and I ended up eating one. And of course, pepper. I already seasoned the meat with pepper, so I put like this much. You can add more after if you want. So this is what it looks like. I added chili flakes too. And if this isn't enough to like coat the meat, you can definitely add more, but for me, this looks okay so far. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, I'm so sorry. I put some oil and I just put all my meat and coat in an oil. And then I add my seasoning. Cumin, chili powder, salt, pepper, garlic powder. Then I massage it. Now you want to take your seasoned meat and just sear it before you add it to the crock pot and get it like a little bit crispy if you can. I usually just put mesh with a paper towel on top to cover it so it doesn't splatter everywhere because these get really messy, especially when you're cooking the tacos. Just wait, man. Now we're going to use these peppers and we're going to blend them up. That is perfect. So once both sides look like this, you're gonna take it out and you're gonna put it in your crock pot. So you're gonna need some reserved water from the boiled peppers. You're not gonna use all of it or it will be bitter, but just have some in case. Chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. You can buy this at any ethnic supermarket or Latin American store. These are your boiled peppers inside the blender and some white vinegar. I know this is gonna spill, so I'm doing it over the sink, but I'm adding a couple splashes to this, okay? Some filtered water as well. A little splash of vinegar. This wasn't in the recipe, but I'm gonna put a splash of hot sauce. Just a bit, because the flavor is overpowering and I don't want to take away from that broth. This is where the fun part starts. So now you're gonna put some oil on the bottom, that's what I do. Not too, too much, but just enough to coat the bottom. And you're gonna take your meat and you're gonna just plop it all in. This is probably enough for like two people and then leftovers. I'm also gonna add this, but I'm gonna add it after. So now we're gonna add in our onion and our garlic. Add your bay leaves. And your seasoning, of course. Two cubes of beef stock or spoonfuls. I do one full cinnamon stick, but I put half in now and then half later, so it's not too strong. Maybe three hours in. Then I take like this much time, but I just chop it up and then put it in. Then you're gonna take your blended mixture and pour that over top. And some boiled water. I just boil it in the kettle beforehand and cover the meat. Then I'm gonna take this juice because why not? And you want to mix it a little bit. Just to make sure everything's evenly coated and dispersed amongst the pot. Then you're going to cover it and set it. I'm going to do six hours, but I'm probably going to turn the heat off at five hours because I don't want it to like boil the meat. So now we just wait. I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> it has been like six hours, no, five hours. 
and it's pretty much done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the meat out, chop, chop, chop it up, prep all the side ingredients, and fry it, I guess. Before I do anything, I just need to skim the oil off the top of the broth because this is what we're gonna use as our frying oil. So when you do this, try not to get the actual broth in it. You'll know the difference because it's more orange rather than brown. So you just gotta kinda push down and lightly let it make its way into your spoon. So now, as you can see, it's super, super tender. If I even go like that, it breaks right in half, which is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna take the meat and put it on my cutting board. Also, at this point, take your bay leaves and your cinnamon out. So personally, me, I don't like these fatty pieces right here. So I removed those because I don't want them in my taco. I left them in to begin with because I wanted the fat to kind of get into the broth. But now that I've already skimmed the oil, I don't want those pieces. So this part's easy. You literally just chop. And you don't have to chop like a crazy amount because it's so tender that it's automatically just gonna shred. Do that. See how easy that is? And then I like to cut it like sideways so the shreds are not too long. So when I bite, they don't fall out. But it's literally the easiest thing ever. It's so tender. I'm telling you guys, I need a new cutting board. Do you see the way it's spinning? Like, oh my God, this is what happens when you buy your cutting board at the dollar store when you move out into your first apartment. And then you just get too lazy to buy a new one. Okay, so for prep, I did some lime, mozzarella, you can use Mexican cheese, I couldn't find any, um, cilantro, onion, corn tortillas. If you use flour, you may as well throw the whole pot away. And then <laughs> your oil skimmed from your broth. And then I put the crock pot over there because I'm gonna just put it right onto the pan. It's gonna be really, really messy. So you're gonna wanna use one of these, a mesh with a paper towel over top. Do not use a lid. It'll bring up moisture and it'll make your taco soggy. Use one of these or truck your kitchen up, but don't use a lid. I like to add some oil just to make sure like it's not sticking because that will make it fall apart. And wait for the pan to be hot before you place it down. Okay, so I'm probably gonna make two because I already ate because I got hungry. So as you can see, I put it in my broth. This is good enough. Slide it around the pan, flip it over. Make sure it softens up before you fold it because if it doesn't, you're gonna end up with a broken tortilla. Take your meat and drain the liquid out and add it to your tortilla. I'm gonna take that onion chunk out. <laughs> add some toppings if you want, cilantro, onion, and of course your mozzarella or Mexican cheese. I like to let it go around the edges because then it tastes so good when it has like burnt cheese edges. It's so good. And you can see it's getting soft, so you can fold it now. And then I slide it over and I make the next one. Now you want to cover it because it's going to get messy fast. You let that sit for like two minutes until it's crispy and then you flip it. Now you want to get your broth, so this is known as your consume. And you're going to just take the broth, try and filter out the meat. If it has little meat chunks, no big deal. And you're just going to toss it in a little bowl. And you're gonna add onion and cilantro. And of course, you're gonna add some lime juice. So let's check on these. Now we can flip. Ah! Ow! Oh. 
See how crispy that is? Oh my god, I just messed up. <laughs> it's so hard to flip, guys. Like, some of these people online make it look so graceful. It's not that easy, trust me. You guys are probably watching and are like, why is she only making two? First of all, I live alone. Second of all, I can make these when I want and I can buy them like 15, 20 minutes away. Honestly, the first time I made them, I ate five. <laughs> and I mean, I think because I know I can just make them again tomorrow and like the, the meat's already there. It's gonna take me five minutes to cook. Like I'm just not that hungry. So but I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like all plated and then I'm gonna take a bite. So this is the final product. It hurts me to only have two on my plate. I know how crazy that is, trust me. This is what it looks like up close. Oh my God, guys, do you see that cheese oozing out? <laughs> I'm so sorry if you're hungry right now. And this is the broth. That's the other side. It looks so freaking good. They're steaming hot. I want to take a bite, but I also like don't want to burn my entire mouth off. But like, I guess we'll just do it anyways. No, I can't, it's too hot. I ended up adding a little bit of salt after and a tiny bit of garlic powder, just cause I think I'm just gonna burn myself. That's just what we're gonna have to do. Okay, we're gonna try this. Wow. That little squirt of lime in the consomme. It, it's necessary. It is necessary. Trust me. Trust me. You guys gotta wait at least like three minutes to eat these because they are dangerous. Like, <laughs> they're hot. Um, but I did have that one bite and I was like, bitch, I need another one. So I, there's a third one cooking right now. But one more bite for you guys. Oh my god. Guys, it's so... Mm. That cinnamon, it's a must, man. But anyways, I'm gonna go watch my show and enjoy these. Mm -mm. That one got a little soggy. Both a tiny bit, it's okay. I'm gonna go enjoy these. I hope you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, Subscribe. Let me know what you want me to cook next. So good. I'll see you guys next time.